Good evening. You are joining the State of Business on Art Television. I'm Nishani Pigera. Let's first take a look at tonight's main stories. <music> government to initiate cabinet reshuffle. Unity government to remain. Central bank maintains policy rates as the economy moves forward. In tonight's main story, Cabinet spokesperson Minister Rajasena Ratna said today that a cabinet reshuffle will be taking place soon. Addressing the media during the weekly press briefing, Minister Senaratna also noted that even though a reshuffle will take place, good governance will continue. There will be reshuffle. Yes. Prime Minister resigned. No, no, no. Cabinet Mandal is also there. Our son is the Yahapal Naraj. Meeta Tala Shakti Matte is there. Come on. Jati Kanda Peter. Me Tiyan Vidhir. No, Janadi Bhutwaange Pradhanatin Sa Gramma Teeruage Pradhanat. Responding to further questions raised by journalists, Cabinet spokesperson Minister Raj Singh Ratna noted that former President Mahindra Rajapaksa has asked Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe not to resign from his post as the Premier has obtained sufficient amount of votes in the local government elections. Mahindra Rajapaksa Mahatmya, the Agrama Tithuma, Pekarne Sakatya, the Janadi Bhutma, the Kiwa. Itu mana kata agak lagi lah alat ini, ayu a ingin ni. Oya muka dah ingin ni. Wagi hundar chandra prati satya akti elat ini. And now let's take a look at a few decisions which have been approved by the Cabinet this week. The Cabinet of Ministers granted approval for the proposal to sign a MOU with Estonia on cooperation in tourism. The long-term plan of developing Ratmalana Airport during 2018-2030 to received approval from the Cabinet. Justice Minister Tarata Atukorala's proposal to publish and present the Amendment of Criminal Procedure Code Act No. 15 of 1979 for increasing the age of a child who is considered responsible for a crime up to 12 years was approved by the Cabinet. The Cabinet of Ministers has also given the approval to amend the Municipal Council Ordinance, Herbal Council Ordinance and the Pradeshya Sabha Act to suit present day's needs. It was decided to instruct the legal draftsman to draft a legislation to establish democracy. In more developments tonight, issuing the first monetary policy review report for the year 2018, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka indicated that it will maintain the policy rates as the economy of the country is moving towards improving trade figures. Addressing the media during the event, Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Indrajit Kumaraswamy noted, that these unchanged policy rates will reduce the gap between international interest rates and national policy rates. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, headline inflation further decelerated in January 2018, while co-inflation remained at the tolerance range. Inflation is expected to stabilize at the desired single-digit level during the remainder of 2018. In the external sector, the trade deficit widened in 2017 as high import expenditure offset the increase in export earnings. Tourist arrivals have increased by 12.6% year-on-year basis in January 2018, while worker remittances have been moderate. The rupee depreciated by 2% against the US dollar during 2017 and 1.2% up to February 14th of this year. Time for us to take a short break. Do stay with us for more news when we come back. Welcome back. You're watching The State of Business. The official brand launch of the Sri Lanka ICT BPM sector was held in Colombo today. The ceremony was jointly organized by the Sri Lanka Export Development Board and the Asian Development Bank using technical assistance funding from the Japan Fund. Minister of Development Strategies and International Trade Malik Samaravikrama was a chief guest during the occasion. This national branch launch will benefit the Sri Lankan ICT BPM industry in building commercial relationships between Sri Lankan exporters and global buyers while further promoting capabilities of the Sri Lankan ICT BPM industry. Sri Lanka has been continuously increasing ICT exports and has maintained an impressive upward trend in annual figures. More than 300 companies and 85,000 technologically savvy professionals are employed in the sector. The ICT sector is the fourth largest export revenue earner and has been identified as one of the key sectors in the national export strategy. Speaking at the event, the chairperson of the Export Development Board Indira Malwata stated that at present, the ICT industry targets to achieve 5 billion US dollars in exports by providing 200,000 direct jobs and by grooming 1,000 startups by 2022. This was nothing but a collaboration between the private sector and the government sector. Today's launch 
was very important to us because I think the ICT sector from a fledgling industry a few years ago has now developed to be an adapt. And they are right now in a position to be able to achieve the export targets that they have set for themselves, which is achieving a 5 billion of exports in, 2020, in 2022, getting 200 direct jobs and having 1,000 startups. So this has been, targets have been set by the private sector and I'm very grateful that all of them are working in order to achieve these targets. So today's brand launch is something that will give more value addition to the ICT and BPM sector as well as make Sri Lanka a sector, a center of excellence. So I, this would be a milestone in the sector today. Meanwhile, speaking at the launch, Minister of Development Strategies and International Trade, Malik Samaravikrama, highlighted the importance of developing the IT industry within the country. Speaking further, Minister Samaravikrama stated that Sri Lanka needs a globally competitive IT industry as a requirement to transform the economy. Today's event, the launch of the official brand of Sri Lanka IT, IT BPM sector, Island of Ingenuity, will go down in history as one of the most important milestones in this industry's journey. Sri Lanka's IT industry has emerged and become globally competitive due to the unique talents of our people. The focus on high quality and reliability, but above all, ingenuity and creativity. We need to tell the world about this and today's brand launch will certainly help us to do that. This initiative is an important action point in the IT BPM sector strategy in the forthcoming national export strategy being driven by our ministry and the export development board. The sector has been identified as one of the six priority focus sectors with a focus plan of action that was co-created with the industry leaders. The IT in initiative envisaged in the budget 2018 and being implemented by the EDB will have complementary programs to help second tier IT firms break into new global markets through a well-designed and well-governed champion builder program. The IT initiative will also support regional IT entrepreneurship and skills availability for the sector. In total, we will be investing over 300 million rupees on this over the coming years. I believe that together with the brand being launched today, these initiatives will drive the IT BPM export sector to $5 billion in five years. Let's take a look at how the Columbus Talks performed today after this short break. Welcome back to the show. Trading at the Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. The All Share Price Index gained 20.95 points to close at 6,553.21, and the S&P SL20 gained 2.21 points to close at 3,701.01. Turnover was 878 million rupees, and 41.3 million shares were traded. Up next are the day's forex rates. And with that, we wind up the show for tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow at the same time. Until then, thank you for joining us. Good night. <music>